now. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, uh, it's Laura and uh, Shibby here from Dogs by Design. Uh, Shibby's behind the camera today because uh, this is a more practical, well this is a, we were laughing at the naming of this, episode one uh, of rules and boundaries and structure. Today we are covering thresholds. Um, so Pretty much what we're going to be doing every Tuesday, 4.30, um, same time, is we're actually going to be going over, you know, one like technique or training tool or tip. Oh, I'm not entirely sure what the best wording is for it, but pretty much what we're going to be doing is going over something that helps you implement structure, rules and boundaries. And the reason that we're actually just starting with this is because... It is kind of one of the uh, one of the things that many owners forget about or don't want to implement because it's not the fun, happy, cuddles side of owning a dog. Uh, but it is, it is really important. Rules and boundaries, structure, limitations, whatever you want to call it, doesn't really matter, um, are important for all animals. We as humans have to follow rules and boundaries, um, a structure, uh, much like... You know, when you're a kid, your parents, or those of you that are parents, you set rules and boundaries for your children so that they can learn how to behave appropriately in appropriate situations. They learn about life, you know, that they can't just have everything for nothing. Um, it, it, it's, it's, an, it's an important part, and all animals have to have, they, they have some form of rules and boundaries, uh, limitations. Um, it's, it's healthy. So we, we're going to focus on actually some real simple ones that everyone can implement with their dogs uh, as a way to start developing a good strong relationship so your dogs look to you for guidance um, safety and structure um, you know because ultimately that's our role our dogs don't know how to live in a human world they're dogs they many of their natural behaviors are probably not actually that appropriate in some situations while living with people so it is our responsibility to take on a role for our dogs that teach them and guide them and show them what is acceptable what we want from them what we don't want from them uh, and yeah rules and boundaries are, are, are a really simple way to start having that kind of conversational communication with our dogs in a way that they understand I mean it would be lovely if we can sit there and have a nice human conversation with them but they don't they, that's not how dogs communicate with us and we are you know humans are super intelligent species uh, you know our brains are capable of lots of things <laughs> um, so you know it's, it, it, we can learn a new technique to communicate with our dogs in a way that they understand a lot more instead of trying to make them understand you know our communication and them adjust to what we want from them um, because we, yeah if that makes sense like we okay we, we should try and communicate with them in a way that they understand because that's clearer and it'll be you know they'll they'll learn a lot better that way so um yeah so we're gonna i'm not sure how long these uh how many weeks we will do but i'm pretty much just going to do one every tuesday until i run out of rules and boundaries and if any of you think of any rules and boundaries that you would like to cover or if you're trying to set a rule or boundary and you're struggling with it um then you can let us know and we'll do a video on it so today we're going to use uh, Gus he's uh my English Bull Terrier rescue uh he is bullies but stubborn um uh, he has we you know I, I when I get a new dog that's the first thing I do is set rules and boundaries um limitations as well as provide exercise for them. That's a super important part. I'm just actually going to quickly touch on that because we talk about giving rules and boundaries for them, but we also must make sure that we are doing the opposite by fulfilling our dog's needs, by providing exercise, an outlet for the energy that they have, a working outlet if you've got a dog with a working drive. Uh, it's finding a, a balance, really. Um, but you need those rules and boundaries to be able to fulfill them as well because if your dog doesn't, follow or listen to you or doesn't understand what it's supposed to do you're going to struggle to take it out for exercise and mental stimulation because you can't because it runs rampant and doesn't listen and it all everyone it just turns into a big disaster um so anyway back to gus so we're going to use gus as the the demo dog um what we're going to do is i'm going to get him we're going to show you through the the thresholds today we're talking about thresholds um which is doors crates cars um 
car doors and making them wait patiently and look to us if they want to go through that threshold. Um, and as we go, I'll explain why, why they're beneficial. Um, Gus is relatively new, so he, he knows it, but he, you know, he still tests, so hopefully we'll get some good, good demos uh, for you. Um, throughout, you guys can you know, get your own dogs and practice at the same time as we're doing us, or you know, watch a little bit, then go practice with your dog, or you can just sit and watch us, you know, we might be super entertaining. Um, I can practice at a later date. So if we are taking questions throughout, however, we would, that today the questions do need to be uh, very specific to what we're talking about today. So thresholds and anything around that, any particular issues you're having with that, you know, um, very specific to that. We're trying to keep it all on, you know, about the same thing. Uh, on Thursday, we will be doing a, a, a live Q and A session where you can join us again four thirty um, and ask any any questions then. So if you have any questions today that are not related to thresholds or the exercises that we're doing, um, join us on Thursday. Cool. Um, we're all good to go, Chevy. Yep. Yep. Good to go. Let's all do right. it. Right. So um, I've got a lead. So it's really important. Oh, she's got her lead tangled around her too. Um, <laughs> And so if you've not really done any of this before, so these exercises are going to be good for dogs that are a bit disrespectful of space, that as soon as you open a door, they barge through it. Or, you know, for those people that when you go to the front door, so I'm going to use this door as an example, when you go to the front door, your dog like barges up and is like right at the door and you open it a crack and their nose is trying to get out super quickly. You know, this sort of exercise is going to help with that because that behaviour we actually don't want to encourage. Like if your dog's barging, pushing and being rude and you open the door, you've, you've just reinforced that behaviour. Going, yeah, be pushy and rude and overexcited and not even acknowledge that I'm standing here. You, you've rewarded that. And, you know, while you might look at him, oh, that's fine, that's fine, he's just excited. Try and change that to, if it was your child all right and here's here's you with your, your kid and you're walking up to the door next minute your five-year-old or six-year-old child has just gone pushed you out the way and buzzed out the door but you're probably not going to accept that sort of behavior from a child or even an adult some adults might be rude like that too so, so in terms of like you know space and being respectful and of, of everyone and and the dogs learning to be respectful you, we shouldn't allow it like they are they are people for dogs being respectful space and boundaries is, is very important and you you'll see dogs interacting controlling their own space and telling other dogs that are too excited in another dog's space to calm down or if they're too close and they don't like it so it, it is important it is, it is it, you know it is important to set those boundaries around that sort of space and barking out the door is rude <laughs> So you do want to make sure uh, if you haven't done this exercise before or your dog is a bit overexcited, is a bit pushy and really doesn't pay any attention to you when you let it going through a threshold or if, you're at, if you take it out in the car and you open the car door and it just bolts out, you want to make sure you've got a lead. So I'm going to do it with a lead. Um, you, need, you need the backup. The lead is there to back up. So if your dog does bolt through the door, it doesn't matter. You can just guide them back through the door and redo the exercise. Right, so you're going to see random dogs spotted all over the place. Um, the ones that are loose and out are my old dog. We've got old man Jasper. He's going to be good oh, what are you about? Jasper's not even in this room. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Lost the plot. Mm -hmm. All right. Jasper's in this room. <laughs> Getting a dog out of a crate is your first threshold. 
think of it right now yeah. but I know I know what you mean yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it's instinctual it's kind like of. an instinctual thing yeah. it's like they just shouldn't be rude and, and, and other dogs will naturally teach them that it doesn't need to be trained like a sit they don't need, you know sit is not a nap you know a dog responding to a verbal command like sit is not something that's that normal for them so yeah we, we need to teach them what it means but for this being respectful is just you should just be respectful um because I know you, you you know, he's from a good breeder, he's been around little mates, he's been around dogs, he knows to do that. And so I need to make sure that he knows the same with him. So you can see this body language from him now, he's nice and relaxed. So he he is probably going to if I move, he's gonna take that as I can come out, which is not that's not the case. So um, with thresholds, so up, uh, you see it went to go forward. Preempting. So if you've got a dog that's preempting, that you kind of do actually want to wait longer at the threshold, um, so that they don't they don't do it. You know, if you're starting with a new dog, you, you know, take do it in small steps. I'm not saying wait there for ten minutes straight away when they're still learning, but you know, wait until you get the calm behaviour, 
then, then I'm fine for now. I'm making Gus wait a little bit longer because I know he knows this. I've done a lot of work with you and he's done a bit of work with it. So, you know, once he's now waiting at the, 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 the crate, you know, you see, just because the gate is open doesn't mean you can come out. So that's what we're trying to teach with the threshold. Just because you can't just do it because it's there. You have to look to me for that guidance because for all he knows, if he's in the car, and you open the boot and he bolts out. There could be a car coming and he can get squished, which is not very, very nice. So that there's a reason we're setting these boundaries because we need to keep them safe. That's our responsibility. So, um, and the best way to be, because you do it is to practice a lot as well, which is why, you know, yes, nothing bad's going to happen if he bolts out here, but something might have bad happen if he bolts out of the car. So we need to be consistent with our expectations. Cool. So now we put, the, put his leash on. So many dogs, if you go to put their leash on while they're waiting, they'll think, oh, yep, that means I can come out now. But it doesn't. Putting a leash on just means I'm putting a leash on. I have still not invited you out of that threshold. So you can see he's doing, doing well. You can see he's sitting on his haunches. So he is a little bit more excited. He, he is a bit more ready to come out as soon as I call him. Um, but it's, you know, it's fine. It's not going to do the world. So, um, yeah, I mean, once you've got your dog waiting patiently, some dogs may be a little bit more pushy, so you may have to do that first stage a little bit longer. Uh -huh. um, we close the door. And it's just about patience. We're not, trying to, we're not getting angry at them, we're not, we're not telling them off, we're literally just saying, no, you're not coming out of that crate until you wait patiently. So now that he's waiting patiently, I'm going to call his name, Gus, here, and he can come out. Good boy. Sit. Yes. Alright, so, you know, I've got a bit of food here. I'm going to reward him, he did a good job, and then he sat straight away, he came out, he gave me eye contact, which is exactly what I want, um, so he's going to be a reward for that. So we, we do want to use food, if you've got food, definitely um, use food to reinforce good choices, so, uh, you know, if he's in his crate, yes, crate. Yes. Good. So if he's in his crate, and you close it, you close and close it, and then you open it straight away, and they wait patiently. Yes, good boy. You can reward that because he's made a good choice. Um, uh -uh. You know, a bit of spatial pressure because um, negative marker of spatial pressure because he was going to come out. Good. Just here. Yeah. Right. And you can practice this exercise in and out of the crate, so it's like your first threshold. Um, all right, we got any questions on that so far? Uh, no, I did not see any questions. Good. <laughs> I've never done the live thing on my phone like this before. So. No, neither have I. So I hope I'm not missing any questions. If not, we'll answer it on Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good, good plan. Yeah. Um, oh, we can just use this door. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Do we need a light on? Is it a bit dark? Well, it is a little bit. I can turn yeah, it. Yes. Alright, so yeah. I'll. Um, so there we go, so that's, that's getting them out of the crate. And then you might be like, oh, okay, I'm going to let you outside to go to the toilet. And your dog might be frantic and we're excited and jumping up at you. And then you, again, like you said, you open the door and they barge past. But what we're actually going for at these thresholds is that you open the door and your dog does that. Right? Um, that they wait patiently and look to you and go, oh, is it, can I go outside now? Right? Um, we, we, the, the, again, coming back to the reasons that we're doing that, is that if this was your, well, this is our front door essentially, luckily we live in the middle of nowhere, but if you opened your front door and your dog was bot barged out of it, you'd go and get hit by a car, alright? So, like, setting a boundary here for this threshold, it, it's what, it, it, it's what helps keep, keep them safe, um, Alright, so, you know, I'm sure there's many of you there that, you know, you go to the front door of guests, knock at the front door, the dogs are barking and they're trying to get out and everyone's like, oh, no, ah, ah, no, sit, sit, wait, and then the dog bowls and you're trying to squeeze out the door or the front gate or, or whatever. So, if you're having to deal with that, this is the exercise you need to do, you need to set a boundary down the threshold. Alright, so... So again, so say this is your front door, your ramp slider back door to let them out to go to the toilet. Um, I want you to open it. Right. And then the dog waits nicely. You should be able to step backwards and forwards over it. 
again, this is a more advanced one, um, but this is your goal, is that no matter what happens, you should be able to stand there and your dog won't go through that doorway and it's invited to us here. Um, so, so for those of you that dogs are not familiar with it or you're starting from scratch, you're going to start off real basic. So if your dog's up way over excited, jumping out, trying to doing what I described at the very beginning, trying to barge out that door as soon as you open it a crack, so you know, moves forward, so you're holding it there, you open and the dog tries to get out the crack. Firstly, actually what you need to do is, you know, open the crack. If they move towards it, you don't open it any further than the crack. So whatever distance you get the door open and they move towards it, you stop right there. You can even close it again depending on your door if it's going to swing open or not. So your dog is right there and they're barging. Next thing you actually need to do is actually get in between and claim a bit of space and actually make, get them to back off. And you can just shuffle into them, back or get out. Good. And you can see he gives me space. Alright, so that's just setting that boundary. It's like don't be so intense and pushy and rude at that door. If you want to go out that door, relax and be a bit more respectful, please. Give space. It's like, again, like if it was a person and everyone was crowding to get out the door and as soon as you opened it, everyone barged through. Like, it, you know, you see in the movies with those sails, everyone's waiting and the door's slightly open and everyone barges through. We, that's, we want to discourage that in our dogs. We want to teach them that it's not appropriate. Um, you know, and he's standing there nice and calmly giving eye contact. He's a good boy, all right, because he's being respectful. So I'm going to reward that choice. Cool. So again, if you've got a good boy, come so if you've got a dog that's all like barged up at the door, first thing you need to do is create that space. Get out. Good, good boy. All right, and then then you go back and you go back to open your door. And if your dog came in to go again, so you got it that far open. Uh uh, you're going to give him a negative marker. Uh -uh, or whatever noise you use, as soon as they come in, you go uh -uh, and get out of there. Okay. You can, again, there's multiple different ways you can do this. You can tell them to sit and wait um, and teach them and give the rewards and slowly build up the distance for the weight and, 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 and things like that. But again, that's training a command. You have, to, you have to spend the time teaching them what weight means. You then have to up the distraction. But I find this way, Again, being respectful of space is a natural dog thing. If I, I was another dog, so I don't know if you've seen the old girl just that was walking around. If she was going through that door and Gus barged past her, she'd tell mom. She'd probably growl and maybe give him a little nip. Because if, he, if she was walking through and he barged her out the way, especially if it was a small space, she would not accept that because that was rude and disrespectful. She's an old, older as well, and um, she's quite confident, so she doesn't, you know, she doesn't like young dogs to be rude to her. So it, you know, it's not, it's not something that he doesn't know he shouldn't do. Is it, sorry, a bit right word. Yeah, 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 I think so. Yeah, yeah, like he, you know, like he know he, he he's Gus is very fluent in dogs. He, he reads dogs quite well. He knows he shouldn't do it to another dog, so he can easily learn that he should also not be just, you know, not do it in people's space either. And your dogs are capable of, capable of that. Um, and again, we're not telling them off or anything. We're just setting a boundary with calm, confident. You can see my body language as well, shoulders back. I'm very calm, relaxed. I'm not getting annoyed at him if he does the wrong thing. I'm just saying that behavior I'm just taking like steps by using my body, um, negative markers to tell him that that, that behaviour is not going to get him what you want. All right, so you build up, and you may, and it may take a little while. Um, you may may have to do it, re repeat it like multiple times. Well, I would recommend repeating it multiple times a day. You know, opening, going to your front door, and even just like for some dogs, you can just touch the front, hand, the door handle, and they're like, oh my god, my god, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they get overexcited and start getting over overstimulated. And then again, if you've got a dog, a leash reactive dog or a dog that doesn't listen when you go out to the park, that energy right there is what is what's starting it. You need to address that. You can't get them to be calm before you even leave the house. You've got no chance of getting them calm while out in public when you might get them way more excited. Right, so that, that, that's some of the benefits of thresholds. Is just to, it's also to slow them down. 
you know, help them realize that if you want to get through this threshold, you have to be calm and relaxed, waiting patiently and looking to me. And then once you're doing that, and I can see that you, you know you're trying hard and being good, good boy, good food, that we can then go for our fun walk. Gus, let's go. And then off we would go. And that's, I, I like to implement the thresholds when we come back in as well. Um, the doors don't even have to be open, or closed, sorry. Like, even if I'm walking up to this threshold, if he's with me, I want him to be aware of where I am. And not just, again, just because the door's open, he can cut me off and barge through. Um, if the door's open, I want him to be aware of why I'm good boy. Come on, guys. And then we invite him across. Hey, Casper, go away. No, go away. <laughs> nice, calm, but a special pressure. He is very old and losing the plot, so he gets a little, a little bit spoiled. <laughs> Uh, when they're coming in. Yeah, so it's, it's the same with going in. Like I, I encourage owners, because this is such a simple exercise and a simple thing, and something you can do every day without actually having to set time aside for a specific training session. You know, you can do this in the morning when you let them out to the toilet. You can do it when you bring them in from being outside to the toilet. There's multiple times in just everyday life that you can implement this, that you're getting that regular getting a regular opportunity to implement a, a, a boundary for your dog. Um, and again, we're going back that boundaries are important, you know? Like if your dog has no boundaries whatsoever, it thinks it can do whatever it wants, whenever it wants, then you're gonna take it to the beach and you're gonna try and control it and it's gonna go, why? Why, you let me do whatever I want, whenever I want for, you know, however long. And he's got, like, there's no reason for me to listen, really. Um, so, you know, um, that they are, they are important. And like I said, they're not even, like, that major. It's just, you know, the simple little um, protocol that you can make. So uh, this exercise needs to be done when you're getting your dog in and out of your car. Um, when I say getting them back in, that could, that means getting them in, like, when you're going to the park and get, making them do this threshold exercise and getting them back in the car when leaving the park. This is particularly important for nervous dogs because some nervous dogs actually want to leave the park as quickly as possible. And if they're frantically trying to jump in the car um, to try and get away, then that's also, you know, we don't want to reinforce that behaviour. We actually want to slow them down and let their brains process what's going on. It's like sit and wait, you know, wait patiently. Then you may get in the car. So it's got... The, the boundaries have so many applications for various things you might be dealing with with your dogs, which is why we, we're super, we really encourage owners to implement, uh, implement them um, where, where possible. So, uh, is there anything else to touch on on that? Have I given enough, enough demo? Oh, maybe I'll just do a couple more repeats yep. of it. Sounds good. Um, so, again. I told him good, he was like, yeah, that means I can go across the threshold now. It does not. <laughs> um, good just means you're doing the right thing, keep doing that. But for a lot of dogs, um, owners often use like good or good boy as like a release. They dogs associate it with, oh, I don't have to do it anymore, but for, for Gus, it doesn't mean that. So, yeah. Uh -uh. All right. So again, negative mark and a bit of spatial pressure. I don't want Door to go for a walk, um, you want to call your dog out and you now need to close and lock the door. Then 
child standing here and he pushes in and cuts in front of me. Don't do, don't do that. that. That's rude. That's, well, it is dangerous. I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure many people have tripped over their dogs as they're about to step through a doorway or a step and their dogs like cut in, in front of them and they, you know, tripped. Um, so, so it's important. Like I, I do want my dog to be respectful of space. And it helps them with their social skills as well. They know to be respectful. And they're, you know, they're like, oh, okay, I've got to be respectful of space. Then they'll hopefully display that a little bit more as well. Good. That's the same. Good boy. So, yes. Good. All right. Yes. Cool. Yes. Yep. All good. So, guys, this week, you are to practice thresholds at every single kind of doorway. Alright, you crate train. I want your dogs nice and calm when you and they're not allowed to exit their crate until you invite them out. Same with the doorway, do it when you're leaning out to the toilet. Every time you go out for a walk, I want you to practice that threshold. Calm and relaxed. Um, I do ideally prefer that if you walk out the doorway first. However, it's not the end of the world if they don't, or, or for whatever your situation is, it's a bit more convenient that your dog walks out first, but what I recommend is having a word that indicates to your dog that they can walk out first. Because what we're trying to create is dogs that are a bit more focused on us, um, so that when I move, Gus moves, when I stop, Gus stops. Um, but, you know, if I'm standing here, uh -uh. if I'm standing here, and it's more convenient, like I'm trying to carry something, it's actually more convenient for him to walk out first when I don't move, then I can give him a command. So, uh, Gus, walk on. Good, good boy. All right, so he's walked on first. So I personally use walk on, uh, but you can use whatever. Good, walk on. Gus, walk on. Yes, good boy. Just watch the bird. But again, yeah, come on. just because he's now been allowed to do that on instruction doesn't mean that if I don't say that command, he can do it. So I'm not going to go there. few comments um <clears throat> Bryony says i love this and we'll be hounding you for an online course when the next dog arrives oh, excellent <laughs> <laughs> nicola says this is also helpful my boys get so pumped when about to leave the house for their walk yeah and kimberly says i love the way he sits off to the side <laughs> who's it i love the way he sits off to the oh, side yeah. gus yeah <laughs> hey very funny boy yeah yeah <laughs> he's a bit of a goober. <laughs> yes, yeah, he is. He's very sweet, actually. Yeah. We call him stubborn, but in comparison to some bullies, he's definitely not that stubborn. <laughs> and cool. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and we will see you Thursday, 4.30 p.m. for just a QA. and a um, Ask us anything sort of thing. Uh, and then we'll be back again with another... Um, rules and boundaries, kind of how to thing. I don't know really know what to call it yet. But we'll <laughs> episode two. Episode two of <laughs> Rules and Boundaries, season one, episode two of uh, our Rules and Boundaries uh, section. So cool. Hope you guys have a great Tuesday and we will see you again soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>